this section, we'll look at improving deep neural networks. We'll start out by taking a look at weight initialization for deep networks, and then explore regularization, dropout regularization, and other regularization methods to improve your network's ability to not overfit. Then we'll take a look at normalizing inputs and the vanishing and exploding gradients problems. And finally, we'll finish up with a mini-project of defining and training your deep learning model to decipher the signs data set, which is really similar to the thing you would do with self-driving cars, looking at street signs. Video, we'll look at weight initialization for deep networks. In this video, we'll answer the question, why initialize weights? And we'll look at fixed initialization with zeros and ones and how that doesn't learn. And then we'll take a look at random initialization and see how our network improves. So what is initialization? Well, we'll be learning a large number of parameters, and so we need to start somewhere. Small random numbers on the range of negative one to one always work best, because these fit well with the numerical stability of our learning algorithms, as well as the learning rates that are default in our optimizers. Here we're going to take a look at the effect of different initialization on gradients. We're going to start off as we always do and import NumPy, matplotlib, and then Keras. We'll be using the MNIST digits to do our testing. We're going to bring in a few layers as well as build a sequential model. Here we're going to load up the MNIST digits as always. We have our training and our testing sets with our training and our testing labels. And then we'll go ahead and normalize those on the range of 0 to 1. We'll separate out the training labels from the testing labels right here with the two categorical method. Remember, this turns things into one-hot encodings. Build network method with an initializer. The initializer that we'll be passing in will control the values that the parameters have when the network is initially created. We'll start off with our reshape to our input shape, which is my habit in order to keep the shapes under control. Then we'll put in two convolutional layers with pooling. We'll flatten, and then we'll do two dense layers followed by a softmax, which is the classic multilayer perceptron. Then you notice the initializer is being passed, and that's handed to each one of the layers. So we'll go ahead and start off by testing this with zeros. We'll build the network with the zeros initializer, meaning all parameters start with a zero value. And then we'll go ahead and compile the model using Atom, categorical cross entropy, we'll fit and train. You'll notice right away that the accuracy is terrible. That's 11%, which basically means that the network didn't learn at all. You could get 11% accuracy by essentially always guessing zero. The problem here is the gradient vanished. It was unable to learn because there's no slope at zero. So you don't know whether to increase or decrease the parameter values. Now let's try this again with ones. We'll build the same network and compile it in the same fashion and then train. You'll see that we fit the network and the accuracy again is terrible. It didn't really learn anything. When we've taken all of the values to ones, the gradients are essentially always positive and the gradients explode, meaning the parameters increase and increase and increase. And so we don't have any ability to learn. Again, the model actually isn't so much stuck at zero as it is wandering off into the wilderness. Well, now we'll use an actual proper initialization scheme that draws a random sample of small floating point numbers from the range of negative one to one. So you'll have a nice mixture of positive and negative gradients and you can learn and go in multiple directions. So again, you can see we're doing the exact same thing and all we trained was the method initialization and suddenly our network works again. We're back to 99% accuracy. That's an important point to keep in mind. When we're doing stochastic methods, we need random initialization to make the stochastic nature of things work. And we need to generate small numbers so that we don't get stuck at zero, but not zero itself. One final initialization method is to consider as he normal or he uniform. It generates slightly larger numeric values, but in practice works in the exact same fashion, so it's a good substitute. 